Welcome to Crypto Tutors. We are humanizing cryptocurrency and blockchain and are bringing the best trailblazers and success stories like Isaiah Jackson, Tanya Evans, Ian Bellina, Cleve Mesador, and Tinashe Nitaganga on the Crypto Couch. Click subscribe and the bell to be the first to watch the latest interviews every single week. And, and your platform and what you were able to do in raising over a million dollars in funding. Tell us a little bit about that process and, you know, how did crypto and, and blockchain, when did it come into the mix? And, you know, where did you start your journey on the crypto or down the crypto rabbit hole? Yeah, so I do want to clarify for your audience that I'm not the first woman to raise a million dollars, but I'm the first female founder to raise a million dollars in a secure token offering and first one to raise a million dollars in crowdfunding and equity crowdfunding. So just wanted to do that because, you know, there's so many women. I don't want to take any shine from the amazing women who paved the way for me mm -hmm. to be able to raise, you know, raise capital. I raised my first million dollars from accredited angel investors, venture capitalists, you know, and um, tech stars, accelerators. So that was where I raised my first million. I am in one of the, the top, the first 25 black women to raise a million, but not the first. Okay. Um, but, you know, after raising that first million, I realized, of course, a million dollars is not enough to fully capitalize and scale a, a tech business, especially one like mine that has hardware and it's pretty capital intensive. So I knew I had to go back and raise more money. And at the time, I was personally um, a crypto trader, you know, I was, I was, I was investing in cryptocurrency. This is 2017 mm -hmm. and investing and in just really into crypto exchange, doing the exchanges and just really into it. And I started investing in ICOs and I became very interested in how are these businesses raising so much money in this way? Um, at the time it was kind of the wild, wild west. All you needed was a white paper and you could raise tens of millions of dollars. And that sounded way more attractive to me than, going around to VCs and doing that road show and that song and dance, which I don't, I don't like. So another one of my a friend and a, another founder named Brian Burkeen, he had raised a $30 million ICO for Kairos. And so I really became encouraged that it's something that I could, that I could do. So I started to pursue an ICO. I went to Dubai. I pitched at the World Blockchain Forum. I was presenting at multiple conferences. I was had my white paper. I was starting to get, um, you know, some of the, um, you know, test the waters, people were starting to commit. And then the SEC cracked down on ICO. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, because there were so many bad actors and a lot of money laundering happening, not everyone. And even though people do, they're bad actors in fiat and they're money launderers in fiat, they somehow felt the need to change the laws around doing ICOs. I really believe that they just didn't want us having that kind of control and access and freedom and then not paying them. You know, they always need their cut. They need their cut. They need their cut. So they changed the laws to where you can't do an ICO. Um, I couldn't because I already had accepted money from venture capital investors and I just couldn't do it in the United States. But they did allow for you to do a secure token offering, which is an STO instead of an initial coin offering as an ICO. Secure token offering as an STO under the Jobs Act, which essentially allows founders to raise uh, capital from the public um, under a Reg CF, which is crowdfunding, using on the platforms that are out there like Start Engine, Republic, Seed Invest, WeFunder, MicroVentures, and multiple others. And so at the time, Start Engine was really talking about doing a secondary exchange for uh, trading of the tokens. And of course, there's no point in having a token sale if you can't trade them. There's no right. point in having a token sale if they can't be used. So at the time, I said, okay, well, let's do the token sale because they're going to open up an exchange and there'll be ATS, there'll be a secondary market. After the 12 month holding period, my investors can get liquidity because that's the thing. I believe if you're raising money from everyday people who yep. don't have 20, 50, 100, $500,000 to sit and let cook for 10 years, most people might want to get their money back and have the option for liquidity. So that's why I really love the tokenization of the cap table because you can not only have a secure record of the transaction and the ownership of the shares on the blockchain. Right. But you can sell it on an exchange like we were trading crypto every day. So unfortunately, once again, our good friends at the SEC kind of shut that down and slowed the momentum on an ATS exchange. So I didn't issue the token. 
-hmm. it was not a it was not a utility token it wasn't to be used it was a security token right. and i didn't issue it because there was nowhere for my investors to actually use it so we're still not there yet um as far as regulators and platforms that really will allow for businesses in the united states to do an sto and then put an offering out on a platform like that we trade on those of us who do trade crypto regularly so i just switched it over to just for now standard equity and then i went on to raise another four million dollars through equity crowdfunding and i and i have another i have a round open now so i've raised a total of five is it five almost five million through equity crowdfunding a million through um uh, you know, venture capital pitch competitions and all kinds of things. But the, the theme is I'm going to do whatever it takes to keep my company funded. But I really, really love blockchain because of the security, because of the, the record keeping there and because of the ability one day for for investors to be able to trade their shares and get liquidity. I love your story. I mean, there's so many things that I want to kind of dive into and dissect. But one thing that I want to call out immediately is just this um commitment this unrelenting uh persevering make a way where there is none and that's definitely something that we want to impress upon folks another thing i'll call out is that you know when we think about accredited investing you know uh having two hundred thousand dollars uh, earning two hundred thousand dollars for consecutive years or having a you know million dollar net worth this is a very exclusive uh community and going back to, you know, being a female, going back to being a black female, you know, that that black women who have, you know, especially during the pandemic, um, we are the fastest growing demographic with respect to launching our own companies, uh, launching on our own enterprises. Want to learn more? Visit CryptoTutors.com.